Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home to the house of the Father. We can think and imagine this loser son having blown it all, having made such a mess of his life that he even wanted to eat pig food and couldn't. That's about as low as you can get. And so he comes back preparing his apology, just hoping really that he could get something to eat and at least work as a servant. What he doesn't know is that the father has been looking for him. The father's been looking out for him every single day. He's been looking for him. And then one day, the father goes running down that road, running because he sees him coming and he throws his arms around him. Quick, kill the fatty calf, get it on the grill, put a ring on his finger and a finest robe around his shoulders and sandals on his feet. Because I thought my son was dead and now he's back in good health. I thought I'd lost him for good. And here he is. Brothers and sisters, that welcome is available for you and it's available for me. There are no preconditions. There are no rules attached. The doors to the Father's house are always open. And here you are. Thank God. Here you are. You are here in the house of the Father. You don't have to be working as a destitute pig farmer to know that nothing out there ultimately satisfies. Nothing out there ultimately satisfies, at least not for long, because this is not our home. And we all know that. Now maybe, maybe it takes, maybe he needed to be a destitute pig farmer to realize that. Maybe he needed to, metaphorically speaking, go to Vegas and blow all of his inheritance. Must have been a lot of money that he blew. Maybe we need to reach rock bottom before we can recognize that outside of the father's house it's all meaningless. It's all worthless and that we need to come home. So the church lays this beautiful gospel before us at the beginning of the great fast, before the great fast even starts. So number one, we can all of us in whatever way we need to recognize that there is a way open for us no matter what pigs we've been rolling around in the mud with, no matter what junk food we've been trying to satisfy ourselves with, no matter what sins we've blown our money on, there's a way back. And isn't it wonderful that when this lost son comes back, it's not like, well, 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 look who it is. Look who the cat dragged in. It's slave rations for you, my boy. And you're on toilet duty for the rest of your life. We can imagine that. We might even think that's appropriate. And instead, he gets a robe, a ring of authority, and the fatted calf cooking on the grill and singing and dancing. That's how God is hoping to celebrate Pascha, Easter, with you and me. With singing, with dancing. 
with a celebration. He's just waiting for us to come back. And the great fast is our opportunity to come back to him in whatever way we need to. The same father that watched and waited for that lost loser son is still watching and waiting and ready to welcome the lost sinful loser in you and in me. And you don't need to wait for Pascha. Thank God. Because you're here right now. And he throws open the doors and says, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. I am so glad to see you. Let us never forget that for anyone at any time, and especially for us personally, the doors of the Father's house are always open. No matter how far away we've tried to go at some point, the invitation to that banquet that's being thrown for you is always there. There's never a moment when that is unavailable if we're willing to turn round and come to the Father's house. We all of us long for the Father's house. All of the joys of this life point to the Father's house. Point to an ultimate celebration that we all long for. We all of us, our hearts are restless, said St. Augustine, until we find our rest in you, O Lord. It's a reminder. This isn't it. This world with its pleasures and its pains, its hopes and its disappointments, its satisfactions and its dissatisfactions, this is not it. And what a sorry situation it would be if this was all that there is. All of us within our hearts is this deep longing for the banquet at the Father's house. Let us remember that and let us remember that we are still sons and daughters of that Father. The other reason the church gives us this gospel at this time is because all of us have a meanie elder brother within, rattling around. I'm better than him. I've never done anything wrong. I've always been careful with my money. I've never gone to evil parties. I don't think I've ever gone to a party because I've not got any friends, but never mind. <laughs> that nasty attitude. Or even anger. You know, you can... I imagine this guy just blazing angry. I've always done everything you asked me to do. I've not so much as wasted a dime. And you kill the fatted calf for this low life who wasted half of our property. And you're celebrating because he's back. I hate him. We've all got something of that inside us. And the thing is, he doesn't go to the celebration in the Father's house. At least we don't hear that he does. Please God, that he t if this is a real story and not just a parable, please God, he turned around and went in and found some reason to celebrate his brother's return. But it doesn't sound like he did. He is not at the celebration in the Father's house. And I think it's important that we remember that there's always the possibility, even if we've done everything right, that we're going to walk out or not even go in the first place because of those people. Those people. God can forgive those people. God can welcome those people. That guy who screwed my life up, God is going to welcome him back just because he repents. I never will. And oh my God, there's a danger there. There's a huge danger. There's a terrible danger. 
that we turn our back on the merciful Father who not only wants to celebrate for the lost son, he also wants to celebrate for the good son as well. But the supposedly good son, the self-righteous son, the judgmental son, won't let him, refuses to be there. Brothers and sisters, do not be in that situation. Let it go. Let it go. Because all of us need that mercy. All of us need that welcome. And maybe the lost loser son has realized something that we never have. He's realized that he can't do it alone. That he can't do it without God. That he's lost and that he's hopeless. And that all all he can ask for is mercy. Maybe we need to realize that as well. Maybe we need to realize that we can't do it in our strength. That we have nothing good of our own. And that all we can do is ask for mercy. But the wonderful truth is that that mercy is so freely available. It's said that John Paul the Great's last words were, let me go to the Father's house. Let me go to the Father's house. That is the longing of all of our hearts. And as we prepare for the great fast, as we get ready for the celebration, the banquet of Pascha, let us remember that the Lord cannot wait. He's literally dying, pun intended, so that he could celebrate with us, so that we could be there, whether we deserve to be there or we don't. And it's very simple. We don't deserve to be there. It's really easy. We don't deserve to be there, but we're welcome there anyway. Smell it of pigs. Whatever, with our sins, with our failures, with our faults, With the dirt on our clothes, we're still welcome. St. John Paul tells us this. It is Jesus that you seek when you dream of happiness. He is waiting for you when nothing else you find satisfies you. He is the beauty to which you were so attracted. It is he who provokes you with that thirst for fullness. It is he who stirs in you the desire to do something great with your lives. Let us this fast, this Lent, Let us make that desire the number one thing in our heart. Let us reorient our heart to that longing for the Father's house. And let us remember that in the words of the fathers that we sing, that the joy we're called there so that we might share in his joy. That he killed the fatted calf so that we might share in his joy. The joy of the father who offers in love. And the joy of the lamb who gives himself for us. Maybe the fatted calf is not so much a calf as a lamb. The lamb of God who really does take away the sins of the world. And who with joy gives himself for us. And with joy, expects us, hopes for us, longs for us, watches for us to come to that banquet that he is prepared. Let us make sure that we are there. Glory to Jesus Christ.